Welcome to Combat Wing Chun. I'm Sifu David. Today we're going to show you Wing Chun versus boxing punching. We're going to show you the difference between boxing punching and Wing Chun punching. And it's not what you think. So let's get started. Let's start with boxing punching. Now, most people are familiar with boxing punching. Very popular is what? The one, two, right? Jab cross, right? Okay, so um, what's the main difference between this and Wing Chun? Well, Number one is the stance. Most of the time, if you go to boxing class, this is the stance they're gonna teach you. All right, you have your weight slightly forward. All right, you have your hands up, you know, in the guard position. All right, you have your chin tucked in. You have the back foot. Um, if you can see, my back foot is on the toe or on the ball of the foot so that I can rotate, okay? So a uh, boxing punch will go straight like this. And another characteristic of the boxing punch, most people are punching with a Horizontal fist, all right? Horizontal fist, horizontal fist, all right? So where a jab, it's gonna be straight out like this, okay? Or sometimes with a step, like that. That's a jab, okay? So notice what I'm doing. I'm stepping into the punch, and then when I land my foot on the ground, that's when I want to land the punch, all right? And what you also see is that most of the time, I hide my chin behind my shoulder so that it blocks an attack when I'm punching a jab, okay? Very effective. Jab is very useful, okay? Okay, a cross, let's hold it out here for a sec. Cross, it is like that. So same thing. I'm using the rotation of my body, of my hips, of my shoulders, to generate power, okay? All right, it is a longer reach. I'm using the full extension of my arm and the full extension of my arm, okay? And there's also a slight rotation, a little bit more advanced for you guys who've done a lot of boxing, probably know about the rotation. So when I'm punching, at the end, I snap it as a rotation. Okay, so it adds a little more power. Like that, okay? That's that little bit of rotation at the end. Okay, so that's boxing punching. You're very familiar with it, you see it all the time. All right, so now we know what it is the characteristics of it, that so as we move on to Wing Chun punching. All right, Wing Chun punching is often misunderstood uh, because a lot of people just don't know how to block body mechanics work. Um, because if you've been doing a lot of boxing punching, if you're using rotational force, all right, you probably won't be able to use rotational force in a Wing Chun punch, at least if you want to do it the traditional way, okay? So in Wing Chun, what we want to use is what you use spring force. Um, I showed you in the other video how to increase punching power part two, the difference between rotational force and spring force. So you want to learn about that, go to that video. But here I'm just going to show you very quickly. This is rotational force, rotating your body and your shoulders. Spring force is springing with your legs, with your feet, with your hamstrings, with your back, with your spine, and then with your shoulders and with your, with your elbow, okay? So with spring force, when you punches, number one, the diff main difference is it's made in a shorter distance because your elbow is down, all right, versus this way, horizontal. The elbow is down, so it's meant for a shorter distance, all right? And also, you're using spring force going in the upper direction, all right? So that's more of a spring chin punch. So I'm not really putting rotational power, as you can see, I'm using spring force. Okay? Another main difference is in the stance. They notice that my stance is weighted on the back leg instead of leaning forward. I'm kind of leaning backward a bit, maybe a little bit straight up, okay? The reason I'm doing that is because I want to use the spring of my back leg to generate that force, okay? And I want to be able to thrust my hip forward in that. If your hip is already forward, you can't thrust it forward more, okay? So that's why in Wing Chun, one of the reasons you put the weight on the back leg is so that we can spring off from it and then use this hip check power, like in hockey, you do hip checks like that, right? So that's what you want to do. You want to use that hip power, okay? So once again, the characteristic is weight on the back leg and you're using a spring power, your elbows are down, and the third thing is that your punch is a vertical fist instead of a horizontal fist. 
vertical face and horizontal face. And is used in a shorter range. Okay? Okay, why shorter range? Because the person doesn't have enough time to react to shorter range punches from here. Okay? Bouncing, the guy can see it, they can slip, they can duck it, they can parry it. But once you get to here, I, the eyes do not, and the brain does not have enough time to react to it. Most of the time you see in boxing, people punch in this range, what do they do? They just clinch, they just clinch, right? Okay? Because they don't, they can't react to it, okay? So that's when in Wing Chun, we do a lot of chi saw, do a lot of sensitivity, so we don't need the eyes. I just feel something and then I go punch, right? I feel a, I feel a punch, I feel something and I go punch. Boom, boom, okay? okay? So that's where Wing Chun punches are better, uh, if you can train the sensitivity to them, okay? So, because without my eyes, I can punch, I can punch, and I know where he is because I've got his hands, so I know where his head is, okay? For example, right? I know where his head is because I'm closing my eyes because I can feel his hand, I know where his wrist is, I know where his head is. So I don't need to use my eyes to know where my target is, right? Because I can feel where the target is. Right? So, um, that's one advantage you can train Wing Chun, not to use your eyes, basically just touch. And I know that's the outside of his arm, here's his elbow, so his head is there, I don't need to think. Okay? If he can, he's trying to hit me with this one, I know the energy is coming, I can feel it, I don't need to see it. Right? And I know his head is there. Okay? And I can feel his elbow, so I know where his hand is, I know where his balls are. Right? Okay? So I don't need to look. And you're using the advantage of being in a close range to use your tactile sensitivity to over, to to take advantage of that. So you don't need to rely on eyes. But you know what? It takes a lot of training. It takes a lot of um, sensitivity training. Um, there's stuff that I can show you. You can do at home, even without a partner to do this. A lot of people don't know how to do it, but I can show you how to do it. So just stay tuned to this channel. If you're interested in learning more, uh, you want to learn Wing Chun, then Go ahead and grab my free, free DVD. You just pay shipping. Just click the link on the bottom of the comments here. And uh, a lot of you will like it. So make sure you get that and grab that before we run out of copies. Um, so we'll see you soon next video.